begin the show. Welcome to Shiny Side Out with Dave and Mackie. Broadcasting from Australia for Revolution Radio on revolution.radio, where it's more than just radio. So jump into the chat if you can. We're in there right now and you can talk to us while we're online, while we're on our show, show number 402. Two and four hundred. Sounds better. All of them. Because it's on air, online, and on your smart device. So grab an app to listen anywhere on your smart device or listen at home on a Grace tabletop digital radio. My call goes out to you, Grace. Grace, whoever you are. If you missed Solaris' show, uh, you missed a good show. I'm just, just saying right now. She had Frank Castle on and Paula Milo or Milo. They were discussing ETs, abductions, and shamanism. Actually, I caught, I caught pretty much half of that. It was really good. What a great show! But if you don't know who we're talking about, and you're listening to our one of our archives, wherever you might find it, and you don't know who Solaris is, shame on you, right? That's to Nick Mackey's line. Shame on you for for not knowing, right, and not being part of Revolution Radio. Maybe you didn't even know that is. This audio comes from Revolution Radio, and so you need to go to www.freedomslips.com or www.revolution.radio and jump into the chat room, subscribe to the archives, because that way you can not just get our show archive, but Solaris's as well, but all of the other hosts on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. And it's $5 a US, or it turns out I think like $5.95 Australian. That I've just got automatically set up. It just does its thing. Don't have to worry about it. And if that's continuing to be an issue, uh, one of the two, one of the um, producers, uh, let me know directly. Um, in case it's the figures changed or there's a, a new link. But that's it. That's all you have to do. It's really, really simple. Now, let's get into this show. Um, Mackie and I. We both acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land where I live, because there's, you can't just generally say, give a, a name of a people across the whole continent. It's the same size as the, you know, the continental USA. So where I live, it's the Darkenjung. And Meki, where you live? It's the Dirac people. The yeah, Dirac people. And we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna change this, this intro. And let us remember that their bushfire hazard reduction burning was well more efficient than ours. Mm. Did you like yeah, that? A yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, got right. to, they got to know it over like 240,000 generations and, and understand this continent and its country and the, the way that their forest burns they got to know that intimately we thought copying them to a degree to some degree well mm, ineffectually uh was at least going to be something but it wasn't and that's did you know just to, for everyone out there i think we're at at two million hectares already uh, yeah, it was 2.1 million. There you go. 2.1, yeah. 2 1 million hectares. And the fire that's coming towards me is still coming towards me. Cheers. It's still spotting in front of it. And we had, to, had a storm during the week. And all it did was all the lightning strikes just created more fires. Now there's Ooh. more fires now threatening where we live than there has been for the last five weeks of this terror threat <laughs> the terror of fire and some of these places Mickey, i've listened to some people who have driven down to like maybe car events and things coming down mm. the freeway and they said you used to be able to see forest and now there isn't any mm. that's it it looks like a lunar landscape for a thousand kilometers and occasionally yeah. you'll see some unburnt material uh, it's it's pretty bad like this is the worst season in the 200 years that we've inhabited the country mm -hmm. and i can't 
I can't establish this. It, well, I, I can't. I can't speak of it with any more emphasis. That today is the first day of summer. It is. Yes, hooray! In Australia, that is Southern Hemisphere. Southern yeah, yeah. Hemisphere. Woo. Not 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 Northern Hemisphere. My, that's, my, that's my good. hands are in the air. Woo. Hey, look at you! Woo, um, you look exciting. <laughs> But but I know people, especially Maggie as well. I know people all throughout Sydney who is Sydney is now ringed by fire again. And yeah. So all we're waiting for now, since we had a bit of a little bit of rain, but it didn't really do much. Um, we're just waiting for the the threat to increase. If the winds increase, it'll go back to catastrophic. So we've had a little bit of a reprieve with some onshore winds and some moisture in the air, but you know it's not moisture on the ground. Let's put it that way. So, Mickey, how was your week? <laughs> oh, look, I uh, can't complain. Uh, work, 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 as you know. Um, and then on the weekend, uh, we just uh, got back from Kayama, uh, which is nice, down south from Australia, from, from Sydney. It's probably an hour or two, but two hours, two hours, two and a half hours drive south. Yeah, right. If you want to get away, it's a nice little bay there, um, and Kayama, that is, and a uh, little caravan park. Uh, took, I think it was like this this time around there were like six or seven families that went with with their respective kids. It's always great fun. They're all about the same age, mm-hmm. <clears throat> roughly. Anywho, um, but yeah, no, it was it was, it was good. Um, um, there was there's no un, unseasonable uh, things that were happening down there. It's, 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 bushfires hadn't quite penetrated the some of the the the, the smog though had come through some of the. The um, the smoke from the fires even drifted down, down there, so that's I guess that's not surprising. Um, and there's a lot of construction going on at the moment. In case you're wondering, uh, the roads are all being uh, built out. <coughs> Why I don't know, but you know there we are. It's, uh, in fact, Sydney in general is a building site. We have a lot more infrastructure than we did before. Again. Your guess as to why we do this is as good as mine. It, it's it's well overdue for what we have, but then there's some other things we're doing which don't make any sense at all. So um, it, it's it's a really strange thing. Like um, the tram, Sydney now has a tram. Sydney used to have the largest tram network in the southern hemisphere, yes. believe it or not. Yes. Right. Yep. And now that, that was that was good. Then no, uh, we don't need that dismantled. Or and in fact, I think it was just tarred over. <laughs> you know, gone. And then now it's back, except they didn't dig up the old stuff. They just built new stuff on top of it. Um, and I, I don't know. Uh, they got rid of the monorail, which is a sort of a shame, I guess. It's a funny thing, the monorail. <laughs> monorail. Monorail, monorail, <laughs> North Haverbrook, <laughs> Octonville. <laughs> it, it put North Haverbrook and Octonville in that. <laughs> it sure did, sir. Mr. Flim Flam Man, I know, but other than that, it's all good. So we, well, we, we do have a few uh, news items, and then we want to get into the meat of the show. We are talking about the, um, uh, the connecting the dots. This is what this show is about. The hypothesis uh, explained, the epiphany I had some time ago, which is a few shows yet still away. And um, we're going to start off. So we, we last week we we finished off with. Uh, some archaeological evidence which is in uh, disrepute because the people that uh, found these uh, pieces of evidence were not professionals. But we'll get to that in a second. In the meantime, though, let's let's talk about some of these uh, news items that um, my esteemed co-host has uh, procured for us. Yeah, sure. Um, today starts a couple of things. One, we'll, which we'll talk about just a bit later on, and that's the the COPA or copper rules. Uh, but the first one is mobile phone cameras. Now, this isn't the camera inside the phone. This is like a speed camera, but it can look through the car and see whether you're using your mobile phone and if you're holding on to it. Because that's against the law now. Well, it's been against the law for a while. They didn't have a technology about it to be able to you know, um, enforce it. Correct. But now they do. And this... And this, uh, you know, it's going to be a revenue raiser for sure. Oh, there's so many people I see on the freeway are using it, you know, still holding their mobile to their head or, the, you know, their, their cell phone if you're in the US. My goodness. You know, if someone in front of you just starts drifting out of their lane, you just go, uh, you're either having an aneurysm, a heart attack, you're falling asleep or you're using a mobile phone. And as you get next to them and they've corrected themselves, you see the mobile phone in their hand. So what are you doing? You know, they say, that, they say that it impairs you so wildly that it's equivalent to 
you know, um, being intoxicated. But it is because your, your attention is, is completely on, on the screen. We've been so conditioned mm -hmm. and it's different to reaching for the radio. It's different to having a drink. It's different to taking a bite from a sandwich because the device requires you to, to um, look at it and, and pay attention. Yeah. Right, where biting a sandwich doesn't really you know, require much attention uh, at all, or even taking a drink, it's fairly automatic. It's it's one of the and then I mean, you, look, if you walk around any major city, or maybe maybe even smaller towns, country towns, you know, mm -hmm. you'll see people walking around, and I call them. Actually, I didn't. I wasn't the first one to come up with it. My, my my friend Justin Stuckey was the first. Maybe he didn't invent it, but he was the first to come up with the phrase. As far as I'm concerned, a fomby, fomby, a yeah, fomby, yep. a phone, a, a phone zombie, right? Yeah. And it, it really, it really is something where people are so com consumed by, by their device that they just, you know, sleepwalking almost. And people, you know, they post this meme, Dave. I got to say this very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, of of these trams or trains where people would read the. The, 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 the paper, yes. right? They, so there would be people, or even books, they would just read and read the paper and books on the way to work and whatever. Everybody was dressed quite nicely back in the day in 1940s and 50s. And there's, there's a picture that comes after it, you know, um, uh, of people, every, everybody's got a device and they're all reading the device. And it says, I oh, see, nothing has changed. Wrong, <laughs> wrong. Everything has changed. Number one, reading a paper is a very different experience to reading an electronic screen. That's number one. Number two, People would put the paper away when they got off the tram, train, or bus. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't walk around holding the paper, oh, reading right. it. Yes. For, for the most part, right? Mm -hmm. it very. Un I mean, they would still hold the paper, and they might even fold it really small. But they wouldn't, you know, go walking around holding the paper, walking through and traffic. That didn't happen. As they walk. Yes. Yeah. So it's a it's a very different kind of thing we're doing right now and because of the form factor it's easy you know it's accessible as fast i can do it when i can watch a movie and this is the problem dave people aren't just reading these things they're watching them and as soon as you watch something mm -hmm. right that's when your attention span goes right out the window i, I have it with my my, my daughters uh, six and, and, and four and a half almost five and they watch tv i say hey hey Hello, I call them by their name, they get no, no response yeah. at all. I, I have to physically step in front of the screen yeah. before they pay any attention to me. No, and not only that, it gets worse. It gets, it gets worse, Dave. <laughs> no. <laughs> so rather than just, just passively consuming uh, screen content, as it were, no, now you're interacting with it. That's you're right. typing messages. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you're activating a completely different part of your brain to write to read a message in the first place, which is bad. Yeah. Secondly, oh, now i got to you know write something coherent and funny and put some emojis in there and you know, be like the guy that everybody likes. You know, oh, look at me. Walk out of the room. Everybody's laughing. I'm a winner. But uh, that's, 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 that's a really big problem because you, you, we, as human beings, I don't care who you are and, and what you do, multitasking while you're driving a one-ton death machine yeah. at be it you know uh, 30 miles an hour 60 kilometers an hour at that speed and let's say even 30 30 kilometers an hour which is about what 18 15 18 six, something like that uh, miles an hour 15 yeah, i think or six, six. Miles, let's just say you know 55 miles an hour which is, which is our 100 or yeah. you know 35 which is our 80 yeah. Yeah, let's call it that, right? Yeah. Even let's say you're going much slower than that, it's still like hitting a brick wall if you hit anything, right? Mm -hmm. Or falling out a four-story window. You wouldn't decide, you wouldn't choose to fall out a four-story window, and, and you would certainly wouldn't expect to walk away unscathed, now, would you? you? Choose to do any of those things. You wouldn't, but you, you you make that choice every day by texting and by you know by by playing with your phone. I, I hate and, and oh, I saw oh, this. I'm, I'm at a I was driving three or four weeks ago. <clears throat> You'll notice that it's on the, mm -hmm. on the M2, right? Yeah. On the way to work. Mm -hmm. And then just before I hit the um, Lane Cove Tunnel, because I work in the city uh, at that point, um, there was this, this uh, P plater. A P plater is like a learner driver in Australia. But you're allowed to drive in, on your own once you've got a P plate. It's like a provisional uh, driver's license. And this the car was just swerving, like in its lane, but it was swerving, it was almost going into the other lane, and then it just kept going. And there's, there's a concrete barrier to the right. Oh, yeah. It's a two lane lanes right mm -hmm. two lanes one slow one fast there's a concrete barrier to the, to the right because we got left-hand traffic and there's a bus in the slow lane and that car that the p player was just swerving between the concrete barrier and the bus and completely oblivious that there's a bus to the left and a concrete barrier to the right now mm -hmm. i'm just bracing for disaster i'm staying right back <laughs> from this thing right and and, and for by, by some fluke by some you know god yeah. god the age, they, they made it through and, and then you know off she went it was a girl off she went um, in the tunnel but this is insane, Dave. I know she was on the phone because I could see it as I was overtaking her, right? Once she see, had that's, cleared. that's it there. See, texting while you're driving. 
is notoriously bad because you've got to not only do you have to look where you're gonna you're gonna type, but you've got to get the you've got to do it correctly, right? You're not gonna hit send on something that's just a bunch of garbage. And my my you know my head unit in my phone, sorry, in my car, it connects and I can just talk to Google. I say you know SMS. Mechie, and I, it says, what's the message? I just say it, and it transcribes it and sends it to him. That, that, that's the way we should be doing it. Um, but these cameras that they've put out there are going to do this thing. And, and Mechie, part of, your, part of your appreciation for how terrible this is in comparison to the newspaper is this device is yours. Mm -hmm. It's a personal experience. That's you, right. You did choose the device. You do daily plug it in it's you're caring for it like a newborn <laughs> Don't, hey, i know you're laughing because you're agreeing with me mm. now that you can see my point of view and i think this is it's contributing these are all contributing vectors towards us not wanting to let it go one of the things one of the things that i've noticed on the train same deal same deal people are just staring into their device they could you know what if the train careered off a bridge you know let's hope it doesn't knock a touch of wood um they'd be underwater still attempting to get a signal mm -hmm. at signal lost will they then become disconnected from their device it is hypnotizing i believe and this is my observation from the week on the on the commute to work I'm watching a bunch of people that have been completely hypnotized by the technology. They're not just immersed in it. They're not, they're not, oh, you know, I've got this thing and I'm watching it and, and I can look out the window anytime I want. It's, it's like when it turns on, the blinkers go on, they can't turn away. Wow. Yeah. I feel sorry for the people who are growing up into the tech and who can't self-police their their time on their device. I I have one. I have one for work. I use it. I, I it's the same device as mine. It's mine, right? It's my personal device. Yes, it's my baby, and, and I plug it in and I nurture it. You know, you clean the apps away. You do all the things. All the same activities as looking after someone, a mm -hmm. person, and. I try my hardest to to not be in it. Mm -hmm. I try, I really try. And look, if I'm struggling with it, and I'm quite quite the techie, if I'm struggling, how are the people who aren't able to control those, you know, desires? I think it's really tough. What a tough world! Is this the mark of the devil? Message? You know what I mean from the biblical yeah. phrase. I wonder. Absolutely. I, I just I wonder if we're not looking up you know what everyone says you know in the in UFO circles everyone says well you know everyone's got a camera on them now why don't we see more UFOs no one's looking up no one looks up anymore. <laughs> that's funny that is funny but but ultimately true that's you know, hilarious though <clears throat> it's a segue. It's a segue. if no one's looking up they're not going to see the next news topic and that is there's, this was a story out today. This is in our in our mainstream news, and it says it lists these things: dust, hail, storms. If I spelled it correctly, fire for Queensland and New South Wales. <laughs> That's the weather. Mm. That was a weather item. <laughs> so I really would have done. Oh, how about some pestilence? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. What? Why not? <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think there's enough food source out for any creatures. You know, oh, there'll be bloated corpses soon enough, my friend. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Why don't you take? Because I, I got nothing else on that. I just thought, what a funny headline. I don't think I've seen that headline. I've never heard anyone talk about that yeah. list of things all in one sentence. Oh, you oh, no. have all of it. Yeah, it's, it's today. Four, four, four disasters in a day. It's like Melbourne used to be four seasons in a day. No, no, no. Queensland, four, New South Wales, four disasters in a day. Yeah, we, we got you covered. All the weather. <laughs> sure. All the weather. That's hailstorms. You, wherever you live. <laughs> Fire, yes. All the weather that you can eat. Um, yeah, the next one is interesting. Hong Kong, young and old are joining forces to continue democracy push. I'm, I am 
impressed with the tenacity. I've said it before, mm. I'll say it again. It is, it is um, amazing uh, that the, the um, Hong Kong uh, uh, citizens are, are still uh, on the barricades and, and they're not giving up. The, the elections just ran as well, as you know, right? <clears throat> the turnout was phenomenal. Uh, so there's a big push now uh, to, to I don't know what, to secede from China? Good luck with that. I, it's like, <laughs> you know, it, I don't know. I, I don't see it happening. I mean, yeah. if, if that's the end game here, I, 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 I say, you know, stop and just, you know, just be, be happy with your victories before you get, get to, I don't know, be turned into a glassy surface. That's no good. It doesn't help anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, just look. But you know what? Do you know what's really weird? Is there is the complete opposite occurring here. Mm-hmm. I have to say that there was a, a news report this week came out from one of our beloved um, anchors. And then I think he worked on 60 Minutes for a long time. And now he's gone off that. Um, oh, Kerry, Kerry something. O'Brien. Kerry O'Brien. He said this week that the enforcement of gag orders and control of the media is only one step from fascism. Right? And I tried to explain this to someone. Like, what does it really mean? Because they're going, oh, fascism, that's, you know, that's a completely different story. But do people understand what fascism is? That's that's the question, right? Well, not really. That's what when you find out, <laughs> when you find out through further, further conversations, they have no idea. I said, what that media control is, it's the same building, except the media control part is the rear entrance to the building, the <laughs> side entrance. The no same... pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> no mean? rear entrance here, sir. That's where I'm like a little flat from... <laughs> I'm a little curious, but I don't go in for those back door shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I was going to say side entrance. I was really going to say, and I thought, oh, no, I'll make it more elaborate. Interesting. Rear <laughs> so, so this is Kerry O'Brien's. Just not, this is my description of his, his story, and that is that it's the same building right fascism is the main entrance at the front that they really want to operate from right and, and it's the control of the media by the government and if once you start to do that then you can you can say what they're allowed to say and what they're not allowed to say and once you've done that hey isn't this what we've been fighting so damned hard to maintain it's freedom of the press even though in australia we didn't specifically have freedom of the press there was there was no you know, quoted line that said the press has freedom to say anything they want. No, but we've been enjoying it. And right now they're trying to tighten up the screws so that we can't do that any longer because they don't want us to say bad things about them. Well, guess what? Don't do bad things and we'll be happy. But it is, it's so not the way that it's going. And so Kerry O'Brien, he's an advocate of press freedom so i had to, i had to put that out there Mackie. it's just gone crazy it really has and there's where you know we've seen people taken to jail for you know distributing material on the internet which was newsworthy mm-hmm. hence the news new zealand thing anyone who had a copy of the video could be sent to jail what why why mm-hmm. It's like that book, Mackie. This is an electronic book. Mm. It's the equivalent, right? Uh, hang on, hang on. You're not saying you're reading now. Uh, look, sorry, Dave. There'd be some people coming over your house soon. <laughs> Clearly, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that sort of led me down the path. This, this is my crazy week of watching the news. So it led me down the path of revisiting again because this is what everyone's been talking about. They're still talking about the Prince Andrew interview on the My favorite! My favorite royal at the moment. I'm going to be you, right? Because he's such an inept little poop. <laughs> it's, it's, well, I mean, oh, you know, look, I, I used to hang out with Hitler and Mussolini and, you know, Stalin was, was hanging with us, you know. Yeah, Paul, but they were, look, 
I'm trying to be polite here, right? I could call them genocidal not maniacs, but you know, I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> so what? It's, I just expected him to to be, you know, if I could, I what I should do is dub over all of his answers with Mr. Burns's voice. Oh, yes, that'll do, right? Because <laughs> because I don't think he realised how how deep he was digging his hole. I don't realize i don't think he realized just how bad the interview was going and he just kept on there's a montage of him saying no and yes <laughs> i love that yeah. oh the poor fellow so, so look in his family i i expected that the queen would have been fully aware that he was going to have the interview and maybe he was coached probably presumably coached into the way he should answer things but uh, it, it was so bad. It was. Mm. It's been labelled disastrous. BBC interview. Disastrous. Like that's the end of his career. They're saying that he's unlikely to ever return to public life now, as a result. No, can't. It's, it's like the, he's he's been a cousin in the attic or the basement. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you you want to see cousin Andrew? No, no, no. Keep him chained up and give him his gruel. Feed him his gruel again. Fish are cruel. Mm, oh, this fish is still moving. Oh, <laughs> yummy. Uh, no, it's 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 not it's not a good thing, my friend. It's uh, I'm not a good thing. What can I say? No, actually, sorry. Let, let me rephrase this. It's a good thing that that he screwed up as badly as he did, <clears throat> just yeah. so people are all of a sudden aware, because mm. they weren't before. Right before, you know, whatever. Now people go, oh, hang on. Wow. Okay. Oh, this is how it is. Oh, well, mm -hmm. that's that's not good. So I'm glad that he was com he, he, he went off script. I guess if there was a script, he went off it <laughs> completely. <laughs> sunk himself. Loose lips sink ships. Shooting him, <laughs> like shot himself in the head or running. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ooh, we'll, 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 we'll put this this end of the gun. <laughs> um, it's 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 Hello. astounding. But but it but it's but it sh shows that two things. Sorry, the two things I chose. One, that this kind of stuff happens in, in the world, right? That's good. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it also shows how disconnected the elite, and I say the elite, you know, the hidden sense of the word, but mm -hmm. the elite, you know, the, the, the elite that we all see every day, you know, the, 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 the billionaires, how disconnected they are, yeah, from, from, from reality. Yeah. And, and here, he's the thing, <clears throat> you know, oh, oh yeah, I was trying to be polite. He's a pedophile. <laughs> well, how are you going to be, how you, what, what politeness is, I'm sorry, I don't care, what, Oh, he uh, he prefers the company of children. Yeah, so that's what what. But I stayed no. there for four days to tell him I couldn't yeah, yeah. with him oh. any longer. Yeah, yeah, because you know I tried to make him better. You know I tried. No, he didn't say that. No. I tried to help him. Man. Yeah, that's that's what I should have said. I, should, I tried to help him. <laughs> uh, it's insane. There's there's no this. It's it's a completely immoral. I mean, the thing is this. This is a funny thing. <clears throat> most most of us. Uh, and I don't care what culture you're from. I don't care what you were, uh, how you how you brought you brought up, uh, what what uh, society you're from, what language you speak, which continent you hail from. It doesn't matter. Most of us know a few things are innately wrong. Most of us, not everybody. Some people are just wired differently. But most of us understand that killing somebody is, is not a really good thing, right? So it's not a good thing, and you don't really have to be taught that, right? If you normally function human being with normal brain chemistry, that, you know, and then you weren't abused as a child and all that wonderful stuff, then then you know that. You know, killing someone is it's not a, it's not the ideal scenario, right? And that's why wars are so unsuccessful and cost so many bullets because people don't really like to shoot each other. Anyway, second, mm -hmm. um, interfering with children, right? Mm -hmm. Pre pre pubescent children, right? Um, now some cultures marry children early. You know, I mean, once puberty has reached, I mean, you, you can't argue with biology. I mean, I would argue with biology, but I understand why people take that you know biological point of view. Mm -hmm. Whatever, that's their thing. But prepubescent children are clearly not designed to do any of the stuff that these sick people want to do, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's just it's just how it is. It's just it's just that's a right. thing, and and no one would argue with it. I mean, most people, yeah, that that makes sense. I mean, you know, it's like it's like oh, should we um, should we go to 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 a ward and uh, or, or go to a school and, and then kill all the children? That's that's not a good idea. We shouldn't do that. That's probably one of the worst things that you could possibly do. But everybody knows this. You don't have to teach someone these mm -hmm. things, right? You have to teach someone to be up like. When I say abused people, abused people, uh, people that are neglected, uh, broken homes, uh, tortured, and all these wonderful things, right? They they can create people that don't understand this anymore. <clears throat> so we actually have to educate people in order to not understand these innate things anymore. That's how we create these monsters mm -hmm. and, and 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 pedophiles to some extent. And 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 by the way, pedophilia is not homosexuality either. 
So people draw this bolt. Mm-hmm. This is this is what really gets my goal. Now, if someone is homosexual, that's, that's their own business. I don't care, gay, lesbian, I don't, whatever. Do what you want, right? But it is, it's it's not illegal, and it's certainly not it's not uh, um, uh, anything that's that's uh, odd or. Uh, uh, perverted or, or against uh, any nature because it happens in nature as well right it, it's as you got two consenting um, adults doing whatever they want that's bad knock yourself out right and so so people but people try to to bring the two together you know pedophilia and, and homosexuality which is a complete nonsense uh, but but again again you, you get this as long as you get all the hate let's go all the, all the hate let's put it all in the bucket and you know this let's let's uh, you know mix it all up and then hate 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 some more um and there's this this muddying of the waters right of, of what the actual issues are the issues are very clear Issues are very crystal clear. You don't interfere with children, tick, mm-hmm. and you don't don't really kill or torture anybody. So, so uh, you don't have to be religious, right? <laughs> I and if like you, how you said that, it, don't really torture yeah. or kill anyone. Yeah, not really, right? <laughs> no, but but the point is, even if you're an atheist, you know, you, you might be, uh, you could be um, uh, existentialist, you know, following uh, Paul Sartre or uh, or any, any other philosophy that you like, or Nietzsche, you know, could follow him. Um, but none of these philosophers said do what you want. No, no, they all, they all said we have to be more, if there's no God, they said, if there's no God, we, we have to be moral beings within ourselves. We, we, we are responsible yeah. for our morality. It has to be, it has to be, and the funny thing is the morality that they propose is very similar to the Christian or any religion for that matter, morality. Don't kill anyone, <clears throat> don't steal from anyone really, you know, don't, don't hurt anyone, treat everybody the way you want to be treated and all these wonderful things. Mm-hmm. And it's, again, it doesn't matter what you profess to be. Atheist, agnostic, religious, uh, f- uh, spiritual, uh, faith-driven, irrelevant. There are some things we just know. We just know these are things. We shouldn't really do these things because they don't feel right. Okay? Um, but but here we are. We, we're seeing that the elite, <clears throat> I, th- I believe the elite, and this is the, 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 the people we can see, the visible elite, right? Mm-hmm. They, they are, from an earlier age, they got power, they got money. They probably get bored. They're brought up into this is generational year. We're talking about maybe in some cases hundreds of years, thousands of years even of, of um, elitism. Mm-hmm. They, they do what they want. They do what they want. They, they, they're no boundaries, they're no limits. I mean, you and I, you know, uh, when we grew up, you know, we probably um, want to date, you know, girls or boys or whatever the case may be. And you know, we're thinking about that and maybe get a car and you work for this and you have to work for the other thing. You know, you got to do well in schools, so you get a good job, and all these things. Whereas with these people, they, for the most part, everything comes on a silver platter, <clears throat> right? And um, they've got fixers. Oh, you know, something happened. Oh, they will just get the fixers in, right? The, the fixers are a thing. They're the people that fix things for these uh, super rich and super powerful, and usually that goes hand in hand anyway. So it's a and but but and to to go you know back to uh, Prince Andrew, what what it brought out is <clears throat> that there is this complete lack of understanding of, of the immorality and the unacceptability of what Epstein and the others had been doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like yeah. it, complete failure to recognize culpability here, mm-hmm. almost. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's what sunk him. It, not nothing else, but the inability to, but, well, he's my buddy, so he does this, that's what he, oh, one of my buddies is, um, uh, 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 he's an eophile, he likes wine, right, and another one is a philatelist, you know, he collects uh, stamps, right, that's okay, and this, this, he's a pedophile, he collects children, <laughs> no, it's not the same, Andrew, so Philip, whatever, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, it's the same, Andrew, it's not the same. It's not the freaking same. I almost, almost swore here, right? Yeah. It is not the same. <clears throat> but to these to these folk, let's call them folk, it's the same thing. It's yeah, just an interest in some simple he's, hobbies that people have. Yeah, he, he's an eccentric. What? Yeah. Come on, eccentric. Eccentric oh. is when you you know when you, you have breakfast in your underwear in, in a cafe. That's eccentric, right? You even get arrested and, for that. And the staff allow you to do it every day that you've been doing it for the last 30 years. Um, Those people tip. <laughs> <laughs> hi, 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 Gavin and uh, Stuart here around the, the local cafe. Um, <laughs> um, hey, <laughs> see, see, that's funny. The, <laughs> I, I think, I think that you know, Mackie, I think you made a great point, and the, the point to me that I, the take home I hear, is that our lives have connections and are uh, uh, the societal connections that run society right the elite are isolated and, and insulated uh from all of this and they have their own happens and going on and this is the question i think i raised this last week and and, and i i was i was hoping that i was i was you know drawing a drawing an, a, the right picture 
and that was that in the past what has the people done when they've found that the elite just seem to have their own rule set specifically mm. in France mm -hmm. right what happened Mackie? I don't know there was a revolution wasn't there there was but was it yeah I always see what you're saying no so no my point is the revolution happened and then you know what the first thing happened that after the French Revolution <laughs> All the, all the people that could could um, uh, initiate a counter revolution, they were all sent to the guillotine by uh, by Robespierre. Believe it or not, yeah. Well, that's what happens in politics as well. So the people that aided you to topple the leader are now dethroned. It's the same deal. It's the same thing, and it still occurs. So. I don't know what the true result of this will be. I think I was surprised to see it still come up, even the, you know, the week after, because of our 24-hour news cycle. It just seems to make things go away really quickly. I brought it up because I saw it. I'm repeatedly seeing this in the news. Um, because it is so... It's, it is so unthinkable, Dave. Yeah. It, it's such an unthinkable situation. Yeah. Um, I, I, Real quick before the, the choral, uh, just in the same vein, uh, the ARIA Awards ceremony uh, took place this week and Hilltop Hoods, God love them, to be honest, Australian rap artists, um, they're really, they're really good. And because they rap in the Australian accent, it, it may be a little complicated for other countries to understand. Uh, not using specific words, just the accent throws people um, in their thank you speech, he managed to get in the line. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Yeah, I know, right? How cool is that? <laughs> Good on you, Hilton. Surprising. Right? Yeah. It was just very surprising. From a music industry very... type. You know, we've had mm -hmm. the Sinead O'Connors you know, talking about child slavery and and uh, that no one listened to her then and that since then she's been proven right but she had to go through the mud to get to there i think hilltops hood hilltops woods brought this out immediately they're, they're living that you know the social media they're living in there and it's the current discussion i thought that was a really mm -hmm. good platform to bring that out but still mm -hmm. saying stay, saying the actual words jeffrey epstein didn't kill himself uh, implies that someone else did but doesn't give you the option of him not being dead of course and so that narrative but Jeff is still the same right he's dead 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 he's not coming back yeah but it, it's it's you have to be a moron if, if you thought if you thought that he killed himself i'm not i'm not saying he's okay. dead or alive because i just don't know right yeah what i'm convinced about 100 <clears throat> percent. I don't, I don't care i don't need a magic bullet here either mm -hmm. he he did not kill himself mm -hmm. too many things aligned there were two vertebrae broken you don't break them unless you apply a lot of force and from what they described in a suicide this just doesn't happen unless he's got like you know massive weights hanging off his legs that that you know somehow pulled him uh, you know down from his noose um but again that wasn't connected I mean, to anything above him yeah. no it's, it's it is it is just um it's just common sense and physics I mean, if you hate science, then you can say what you like. It's okay, right? Because <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're ignorant. Mm -hmm. But this is this is basic science. It doesn't. You can't. It can't happen unless there's certain things that go with it. Yeah. We'll talk about uh, science uh, in, in in a second, in in the show notes. But you must understand that it is the most unlikely scenario here that he killed himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the outlier. Uh, yeah, it's 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 building seven. That's what it is. There it's building. There you go. Sorry. Yeah. I thought I'd say. <laughs> oh, I like how you did put that in. <laughs> so, look out of out of science. I have gathered a couple of stories, and, and this is this is one. This is a science and a health one as well. But the science one, Mickey, that I could not believe, couldn't believe, that they're now suggesting. Because you know how you can play music to plants, and the right kind mm -hmm. of music will encourage growth. You know, if you play classical music, it makes everyone feel good, right? Yep. Well, they're saying now that if you play, you put place underwater speakers where the coral is suffering, 
and play music to the choral that it is this harmony of rebuilding itself and it's it promotes the regrowth and survival of the choral cool. okay things awesome i didn't know they could hear anything no, it's vibrational it no, plants can't hear either yeah. it's all vibrations good vibrations <laughs> oh man that's that's you know what that that's the start of a billion dollar career right there you heard it here first I, yeah we we well, all all of us did <laughs> yeah, no. like, where were you when when the career is the one mackie singing yay yeah. um no but look uh it is it's vibrations and then it's it's the, the scale as well of the music that's used uh so yeah um yeah. i'm not surprised but it's, no, uh, it's great that it works though could you imagine if the whole world was listening to music and enjoying it and promoting growth and positive thoughts? Wow, what a world we'd live in. Maybe the, oh, yeah. maybe, maybe we could crawl out of the recession that they were not saying we're ever in for, for months yeah. and months and months. Uh, it's an idea dream. Yeah, I know. I know. I look, it's a silly point of view, to be honest. Um, look, Samoa. Mackie, I know you've been we've been talking about and you've mentioned a number of times the um oh what's it called that lung disease or that's TBC tuberculosis yeah but the, the special one that's close to our shores which that's, is... it's 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 drug resistant drug resistant it's, it's, yeah it's, it's it, yeah. yeah tuberculosis it's it's multi strain resistant it's bad that's the mm. one yeah well Samoa American Samoa well, that's one half of the island, just the regular smell is the other half. The measles, the deaths attributed to measles has doubled so far since the outbreak began. And they're now saying one in 70 people have caught it in Samoa. It's, right. it's a real bad it's... outbreak right now. Um, and so, so the, the deaths now, the death toll is 40 two that would make my my daughter go crazy it's a trigger word 42 she seems to have, see this everywhere it's you know obviously the answer to the ultimate question and it is it is this thing that we've all become accustomed to growing up without visibly noticing other you know what, what used to be prevalent diseases in our civilization that we'd we'd pretty much gotten rid of most of the really bad ones right measles polio uh all i forget the others but we'd gotten rid of them to this to the extent where we felt comfortable and the people that grew up without seeing it day to day are a little complacent and think oh it doesn't it's never going to happen again and suddenly here we go we've got a huge outbreak occurring and they're the world health organization is concerned that you know travel to and from the country is going to be you know uh, going to spread this to other complacent societies wow yep. big story big story in the, in the you know as far as health is going but <clears throat> the the other there's only two more um uh, HIV, hiv uh, it hasn't been in the news for like a million years right and yeah. it's now they're now saying that the diagnosis rates of new infections have gone up so much now for straight men that now straight men have a higher diagnosis rate now than gay men is that right yeah interesting so that's it makes sense because yeah, yeah. Africa contributes massively there because, again, thank you, Catholic Church, which says no, you can't use any right. prophylactics or any 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 uh, birth control of any kind. Mm -hmm. uh, which, of course, is not just for birth control to protect you from all kinds of kinds of things. Um, but it's it's really um, uh, where where you have these, uh, I guess, men driving trucks, this and that, and this is this analysis. Or the study was done and documentary I watched that that, that aided the, the spread significantly because they you know they would go to prostitutes. But they wouldn't protect themselves, and then they would, um, you know, go back, you know, to their families, and on and on went. And, and, and so Africa is in bad shape in that space. I mean, other other nations are the same. So, so we've lost that fear. I think somewhat of, of the um, uh, initial AIDS um, epidemic uh, uh, scare that was around in the eighties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's all gone. 
<clears throat> there's no more campaign that I've seen. Yeah. Um, recently, and I guess there's 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 more things to worry about than that. I guess the things that kill you much quicker it's than that. Right. But down um. The list, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm surprised. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Uh, but I, I'm surprised we're not hearing much about it anymore, though. That's mm. interesting. You know? Well, I guess you're going to die or something. <laughs> I, but I, I don't believe that people have become or are so accepting of that phrase that at one, at one point in the future I'm going to die, so I don't care. I'm not saying you're saying that. Mm. But I, I don't think that that is, is at all the excuse. I think that... No. Well, that HIV course. isn't something that you can visibly see. I don't. There's no indication no, it's very, that someone it's, has it. It's, it's a concealed virus. It's contact with bodily fluids. And, it's insidious. Yeah, and you know, they had to design yeah. something to kill a bunch of people through pro pro procreation behavior. That's the one. That's the one. You know, it, it could only be. It, gestation is so long that you wouldn't know it's not like ebola you know where your eyes pop and stuff right you bleed from everywhere no. that <laughs> and uh, ultimately AIDS doesn't actually do kill it, it. That... <laughs> that's right yeah it's a mutant so, deficiency syndrome so you, you die from you know you die, cancer is quite common you die from uh, the cold you know uh, flu things like that um, that's right. just can't take it better because your immune system is compromised interesting very yeah, interesting. And, and it replicates using your your white blood cells yep. from your immune system. So, yeah. Um, an insidious. Absolutely terrible. If you could make something, and the evil geniuses, the boffins who are making these things, could design something, you know, it would look something like that. Um, <clears throat> copper rules. And if you don't know what copper is, it's the kids' privacy certified. Um, Act that came in in 1998, and it's the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. I hope I got that right. Um, it was designed in the early days of the internet to protect children from predators. That's the, the whole basis of it, and that a website would not be able to have, you know, uh, join up to our our mailing list, children so that we can collect your name address and location contact details and make contact with you later or sell a list to someone else so it was meant to just prevent predatory acts but now since the 700 million dollar lawsuit um, payment from youtube to the government for the breaches of its own policies youtube has now turned the wick up on the policies and now says that you know what we're going to we're going to basically, according to these rules, we have to turn off monetization for any content that's aimed at children. And if you think the content that you make is not aimed at children, then you're going to have some issues because we can fine you for everything that you post as a creator. If it is truly designed for children and you didn't say it wasn't, or you didn't say it was, if you lied or made the wrong kick <coughs> right um mm -hmm. this this 30 million dollar you know un kinder surprise opening unboxer guy right he's a mm -hmm. kid he's a kid south american mm -hmm. he's not allowed to be monetized any longer 30 million dollars what's a what's a quarter of that right so a quarter of that yep. is what youtube made off that of that kid we're talking some big numbers so some of the oh it's big, it's big bucks oh big bucks yes yeah. Because yeah, it's it's kids that that would browse indiscriminately. They're just on YouTube, just watching stuff, right? That's right. Not knowing how much it costs. So yeah. Yeah. So Certainly. when they're presented with an ad, so there's no more ads. You're not allowed to advertise to children. So there's no more ads. Um, you know, Google tried to do this thing. They made uh, YouTube Kids, which no kid watched because none of the channels they were they wanted to watch were in it, and parents have been allowing children to use their account to watch. Oh things mm -hmm. online and mm -hmm. that sort of has to stop all that all that youtube has to do is enforce this thing to say if you put a video up you say it's it either is children or it's not children friendly and then youtube has rules around it so number one you can't be monetized number two the children are not allowed to be notified if you make a new video 
they won't if you even if you click the bell and you subscribe to the channel they won't be notified there's you can't do children's you know you can't do cartoons or movie reviews or game reviews you can't you know do disney voices for instance right i know one of the guys who has a disney voice channel and he's going to be paying a lot well he's going to lose all his own income all the top youtubers except for pewdiepie for instance um all the game theories and film theories and the people who do brilliant animations like odd, odd one out odds one out well sorry yeah odds odd one out um there's another one another girl that does a very similar cartooning style she's just cartooning her life she's 28 right she's 28 talking about when she was at school and she's animated it it's awesome no more no more money for you so what is child is 16 and younger is it considered a child 13 and younger, 13 and younger. Yeah. so 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 how just so, but i mean unless it's you know it's a restricted content or content anything could be classified as children content Absolutely. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so you can't even review you a know? movie that a child might no. see might yeah. not even if it's aimed at them yeah but but 13 is pg yeah. Right. So, so that's that's the vast majority of all movies. You know, it's it's a it's a thing. So the only thing that you can monetize is adult content, right? That's right. So, that's so the people who have been, you know, had a really good career from YouTube, that's going to go bye byes. Yeah, they're going to go to um, Twitch. They're going to Twitch. Yeah, now. they'll they'll have their own subscribers and. And, but, but, you know, this is the funny, the funniest part is that if you are a parent and you want your child to watch that channel, you've got to send mm. a fax with all the details and sign it to this organization. Mm -hmm. A fax, Becky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you man. <laughs> fax, not even an email, that is even a email. Who, who, st who still has fax machines? Exactly, right? Right? No. And these rules are made by people who don't even have cell phones. I know. That's been it's... the largest complaint from all of the YouTubers. Like, what on earth is going on here? Right. Yeah. Oh no, we, we are now in the uh, insane stage of, of everything. This is where we are. The the, the 2020s, when you know beautiful. when they roll around, mm -hmm. they will be known as the in, insane times. That's right. The insane decade. The insane times. All right. Well, look, we're going to go to a short break. We'll see you on the other side of this. Take the time to uh, to donate to the station. Click around some ads. Enjoy it. Maybe even buy something. Welcome back to Dave and Mackie's shiny sound out. Uh, shiny sound. Shiny side out on revolution.radio. If you're a new listener, fantastic. Come on to the chat if you like to. And subscribe so you can see two of our past shows. 400 of them. If you're a new listener, you can also donate to the station if you like the content of our show or any uh, host's content on this particular station. It is not corporately sponsored. All donations come from the listenership. That is you out there. Now, this is show number 402, 2 That's right. and 4. Two. That's right. 100. <laughs> it is, it is. We said it did about an hour ago, remember? Oh, yeah, it's a long time ago. Ah, Alzheimer's is settling in nicely. <laughs> um, and we're talking about we're talking about uh, connecting the dots. <clears throat> I mean, you know, because when we first started the show, we didn't really have an agenda. Um, it, it was the Dave was offered the opportunity just to uh, spur of the moment, I think it was, and they give me a buzz. And we've been doing it ever since. Uh, but as, as the show progressed, and we spoke to more and more researchers and some really interesting people. Um, I want to don't want to bore you with it. You can go back a couple of shows. We mentioned a few of the names. Uh, it became clear that a lot of people came to similar conclusions, or they they came to um, similar divides in the road. No matter where they started, you know, it could have started out as a um, Bigfoot investigator, a UFO researcher. It could have you know been looking for uh, ancient civilizations. You know, could have been someone you know that that tried to follow you know the Vatican and and the monetary conspiracies. After a time, if you spend enough time in this kind of um, environment, <laughs> I want to say the life. If this was a if this was like a crime syndicate, we'd be living in the life. 
but uh, you know, if, if if you were part of this this um, community, research community, and the people that are out there, you know, just trying to figure out what it's about, you, you will all eventually come to similar places, and then we found that. So we decided to decide you know, earlier on that. But what is it all about? What is this all about? What is what does it all mean? How do how do these things connect? And they do connect. Uh, believe it or not. Uh, just recently, I, I re-watched a few documentaries, and this was about the Skinwalker Ranch. And the funny thing is, right, the Skinwalker Ranch, which has uh, a Bigfoot uh, phenomena associated with big black dogs, big black cats, uh, Skinwalkers, of course, themselves, uh, but also UFO phenomena and cattle mutilation, all kinds of weird and wonderful things, uh, dimensional displacements. Uh, what, what do I mean by that? And there's this, this, this story of the Skinwalker Ranch, which has a bull that was found inside a shed. And th there's no earthly way in which that bull could have got into the shed, which was just big enough to hold the bull, but there's not a door big enough. Unless you built a shed around the bull, mm -hmm. right, which they didn't, uh, or at least, you know, we, we think they didn't, uh, there's no way to get the bull inside the shed. Now, if, if you work in high dimensional spaces, then you can easily get that. What do, oh, what do you mean by that? Okay, well, mm -hmm. piece of paper, and you draw A and B, right, on, on piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And the shortest distance, as we've all learned in, 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 in ge geometry, is, is uh, a straight line. In a two-dimensional space, that is completely true. That's absolutely the right answer. In two-dimensional space, the shortest distance between two lines is uh, between two points is a straight line. Absolutely. However, in three-dimensional space, that's complete nonsense. There is no distance between the two points. You just fold the paper over and you put a needle through it. Yeah, instantaneous connection between the two points, no intervening line necessary. Think of our three-dimensional, well, if you take time into consideration, our four-dimensional space and being able to fold it over in that fashion, right? Imagine, to, to, you know, like the TARDIS. You take that space over there, uh, the big space, and put it in here, you know, by, by, by sort of folding space over. Um, yeah, that, that's right, the, the mysterious Black Panther sightings and all that. We have them in Australia as well. So there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there which is connected. I want to go as far as saying... Everything is connected. Now, there are also, uh, of course, false leads, red herrings, things that are deliberate misinformation to throw you off the scent. But even that helps you in your research, right? The more misinformation are put out there, the more likely it is that you're onto something. That's right. <laughs> okay? It, it's, it's, it it's, it's a messy. funny sort of... It gets messy down the cul-de-sac. Yeah. It's, it's a false negative in a way, if you know what That's I mean, right? right? Um, so... Yeah, so, so so what this is what this is. And and last week we spoke about a few things. What we finished off with last week was um, some really strange anomalous evidence around the uh, uh, age of humanity, specifically the age of uh, Homo sapiens or Homo sapien-like creatures on this planet. Um, do, uh, you know, usually uh, expressed as footprints, sometimes bones, sometimes artifacts. There was one artifact that was mentioned was an iron pot. Right, and it was uh, found in a in a in a, a coal coal. Bearing, in a lump of coal, yeah, in a coal bearing seam, right? And that that particular uh, seam of coal uh, had been uh, dated to uh, I think three hundred million three hundred million years ago. Three hundred million million, yeah. So it's completely out out the window uh, for any evolutionary theory. Now, just before we go on here, and I'm going to talk about the science uh, about of, of the whole thing for a second. I, I'm not I'm not a, a, a I don't see evolutionists as my enemies at all. Evolution uh, is, is a very nice theory. And, and the person that came up with it was very bright. It wasn't Darwin, but it was nonetheless, and he, he made it popular. And um, it's, it's, it's a very good way of explaining how things happen, right? It's, it's not the only way, and it's certainly not the exhaustive way of explaining how things happen. So, so Darwin postulated everything happens very, very slowly. There's the steady state theory. Everything happens very, very slowly. And, you know, given, given long enough time, it'll just, it'll just happen. I have, to have a number of issues with that. That's why I subscribe in my, at the moment. My 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 uh, my uh, pet uh, theory around this, not mine, but the one I, I take probably as most likely, is punctuated equilibrium. That means at crisis points, you know, population pressures or outside influences, uh, radiation, whatever it might be, there is a quantum leap in change, in adaptation, in evolution, if you want. So I don't think it's a slow and steady state at all. I think it's it's abrupt and catastrophic. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it's the opinion. Punctuate. Thank you, Dave. 
And it's, it's in fact, it was uh, formulated by not me, but by others. Uh, look up punctuated equilibrium if you want to learn more about that. Um, but this is this is really, you know, beside the point, um, because science is, is important. And, and what we have reached, though, is the end of science in some fields of uh, uh, research. And we discussed this as well. And scientists have said, yeah, we, we can't research this. When we talk about reincarnation, and I have to draw the long bow here, right? This is, again, connecting the dots, remember? Um, we... we when we talk about reincarnation, nobody would fault the research that had been done uh, by the various, Stevenson, for example, and others, right? But by, by the various scientists that were involved with doing the research and the um, evidence gathering for reincarnation. Nobody faulted the method. Oddly enough, no one faulted the method either for, uh, for uh, Cremo and, and his uh, colleagues when they um, looked at the extreme age of humanity. But the point is that, that the, um, one of the most telling things that was said is we, we don't have the science to investigate this properly. We, we can't test this theory. There's, there's nothing we can take to the lab to simplify things, right, or, or oversimplify. We can't dissect anything. We can't measure it. We can't weigh it. We can't, there's no repeatable thing here. It's just anecdotal. And that's, that's true, because by the very nature of the phenomenon, reincarnation, how, how would you measure it, right? Uh, I mean, you know, we, we, we need to find out the uh, exact length and depth of the soul, and then also the flow rate with which the soul flows through the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not really how it works. Or maybe it is. I don't know. We just can't do it. It doesn't mean it's not real, though. I think there's a for the longest... that, Nikki, if we could get it. Uh, if I can just formulate it right, right? Mm -hmm. um, for the longest time, we, we couldn't explain thunder. Uh, and uh, obviously, the, the, it's a accompanying uh, phenomenon of lightning. We couldn't understand lightning, so we attributed it to the gods. You know, But then we came up with, uh, again, a scientific method. This is something in the physical world that we can measure. We can understand and we can figure it out. right? We just have to now come up with the scientific method, if you will, to study these phenomena which so far have eluded us. A skinwalker... Uh, range is, is perfectly uh, um, cromulent, an example for this. <laughs> See how I got that in there? Uh, and and I, I say this because the, the scientists that were investigating, by the way, the, the ranch itself now is, 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 is abandoned. The family abandoned. They just couldn't take it anymore. Um, but, but essentially, the scientists were saying, well, look, this, it, it, at times it felt like the phenomena we tried to study were studying us right back. Mm. That was just off the cuff remark. Uh, they they made a lot of observations, a lot of measurements, none of them made any sense. All, all of them are real enough, yeah, as, as, but again, because they can't be categorized uh, and cataloged and they can't be repeated, they're anecdotal. That's, that's what anecdotal evidence is. It's, it's evidence that comes about in, in bits and spurts and you know, can't be uh, um, formulated properly to be brought back to the lab and repeated there. And that's really that's really the, 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 the problem we're having right now, right? That's why the so-called theory scientists don't really want to spend their time there because they, they can't make money out of it, right? It, it, there's no one would, would necessarily openly research this. I can guarantee you that the government... Pony up the cash to support you to research it. No, no, correct. But, but we know for a fact that a lot of these phenomena have been studied by both the Russians and the Americans and others mm -hmm. uh, over the last few decades. Secretly. Secretly, secretly. Right, Montauk and, and others, um, and, and we know that this happened because now there's some declassified information, <clears throat> right, that came out that has shown us that in fact the government is very interested in these things, and and there's no way they can replicate it, and they don't know what to do with it. They know these phenomena are real, and they're trying to find a way to exploit them, to to use them to their own advantage, which again is you know perfectly uh, uh, understandable, human nature being what it is. Um, but the the mainstream science and, and you and I are discouraged from looking at it for various reasons. So again, this is where I'm going to lose a lot of you as well. I believe magic is real. I believe magic is a real thing. Mackie, that's insane talk. Well, is it though? Um, for the longest time, people didn't understand electricity. They didn't understand magnetism. They didn't understand any of the things they couldn't see. I submit, and I've done it before, that magic, or what we call magic, is simply another form of energy which some people can tap into. It's that simple, okay? Maybe they're physically differently. Maybe they've got a different biological makeup. Maybe there's some other things they can do that we can't, but they can tap into this energy, which, which, which is closed to most of us, right? We haven't got a magnetic sense. We can't sense magnetism. Bats can. Doves can. Pigeons can. They can. We cannot. To them, magnetism is a very real thing. It's part of the everyday sensorial experience, right? Why can't magic be in a similar fashion a part of everybody's or of someone's experience every day? Because that's just the way they're wired. That's just the, what they do. Yeah. Um, electricity. Show me electricity. 
and you will you will point to a light bulb maybe if you're smart yeah no no you, you show me the effects of electricity i want you to show me electricity mm -hmm. and if you're half smart you you point at, at lightning and again it's an effect of electricity but yeah that's that's fair that's probably the purest form of electricity we'll ever see a flash or an arc of lightning right but ultimately unless you harness it it's just the power that you're observing oh you're in awe of it right you can't, you can't do anything with it you just don't you don't understand it we understand electricity we understand magnetism we understand all these forces that we do not see right okay. and they don't even act upon us Go on. You, you can't see my hand is fleming's left hand rule there you go with everything <laughs> to each other. i'm holding it up going oh i i, I can show you what it does but mm -hmm. you're right you can't see you can't no. actually look at it no but, but, Becky, but, I, I want you know arthur c, arthur c. Clark, Clark's yes. three laws they were and one of them... Oh, no, that's... The, the, you're talking about... Um, sorry, the three laws... Are talking about robotics? No. No, 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 no. I, I'm talking about the his his quote of... Oh, yeah. Any sufficiently Man. advanced technology yes. will appear as magic. Yes. But that's paraphrasing. That's correct. And, and that's, that's, that's why I support that it's magic phrase that you said. Because I believe yeah. that there's technology or a natural phenomenon which we're unable to grasp right now and we see it possibly as magic yeah and there's you know, look again i don't want to I'm, I'm supernatural um look I, I do believe that there are supernatural elements to existence and by supernatural i mean exist elements that are not natural or biological or, or, or physical in nature they're energetically driven they might be driven by by su more subtle frequencies right mm -hmm. so that's supernatural but that by the same token there are phenomena that we're observing that have very much an effect in the physical world which but therefore are not supernatural though right we simply haven't understood them and they just pointed out so clark said exactly that right any sufficiently advanced technology will appear as magic right um and it would imagine you go back a thousand years fully decked out with your tesla and, and your little battery and your phone all fully functioning it, you you would you'd be burned at the stake is what would happen to you <laughs> okay or you'd be god well, actually the further back you go the more likely it is that people think you're some kind of god but um but so that's that's where we're looking i mean think about all the all the uh, stories that have come, come 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 down to us as well uh, through through the ages of, of um, people appearing or ma magical beings or angels or gods appearing and doing certain things right just just look at that in a new light as well uh, think of the cargo cults for a second here right the people in um, in the islands in world war ii that looked the pilots uh, american pilots were landing you know bringing a whole bunch of stuff like you know candy and chocolate and whatnot and then one day it would just disappear world war ii was over and the islanders were going hey what happened here what's what's going on so they built runways they built towers and, and weather vanes to, to bring back the gods from the sky. And they were called cargo cults, a real phenomenon which was studied by anthropologists. Um, so so these, these are real things that have happened. And, and we, we just, we, we lack the science to study them properly. We lack the science to understand these phenomena. It's just how it is. It's just nature, right? I mean, there's nothing we can do. It's just um, at the moment. But I do believe and I hope that eventually we will get there. I don't read Chinese. I'm sorry, Dave. But... Um, yeah, yeah, this is a good point. How far could you go back in time and still understand English? Now, I'm better off than you, most of you, because I speak German. And you say to me, why, why, why does that matter? Because this, the English that uh, Shakespeare spoke was a lot more closely related to German than it is to, to modern English. So when I did uh, Shakespeare in high school, I was at an advantage, <laughs> okay? Because a lot of the, the phrases and words are actually German. Thou hast... Yes. Yeah, thou hast, that's, that's, right. that's du hast. It's the same, H-A-S-T, right? Mm -hmm. You have. In German and in, in Middle High English that, that Shakespeare uh, spoke there, same. You, all of you, would be lost <laughs> at that time. Absolutely. And go back even further. Yeah, it's, it's true. Go back even further and even my German won't help me, right? A uh, thousand years, two thousand years. Go on. Yeah, so, so in English, using only English, you can't even go back 500 years. No, you, 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 you can, you'd be lost. And <laughs> you'll be misinterpreted. They'll think you're a crazy person. You won't understand one word that they say. So all the science fiction has taken us back to believing that we're still using the same phrasing. We are so not using phrasing that's relevant to that no. period of time. The the only person that would have half a chance is someone that speaks Chinese, like Mandarin, yeah, potentially. Yeah, no, uh, or that's been maintained itself. 
Well, it's a somewhat. I mean, it would still be a stretch, right? I mean, especially going back 2,000 years, but you would have a chance. You would have a chance of, of being able to communicate. And if you, if you were lucky enough to partake in a classical education and learn maybe some Latin and ancient Greek, mm -hmm. then you would be okay too for the, well, like going back maybe two and a half, three thousand years, right? Wow. But if you don't have that, English is not going to do you anything. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it, At there, all. There was, I was, one of the documentaries I watched this week was, was all about the evolution of English. And they made that comparison, and, and I eventually found a video which I'll post into the chat room. Yeah, so please everyone, do. So that you can. It's fascinating. It so you get it, right? Mm. It's really and crazy, it, Mackie. It is. I mean, look, I wouldn't time travel unless I had a translator with me, right? Like a like a little electronic thing. And we're getting there. We're actually getting there. It's not bad, but it needs to have a reference. So you can't just uh, get the translator, and unless it's got AI installed, it's really smart and can yeah. self learn. And we're still so a few day, a few years away from that. Well, it's it, 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 right it's offline, which none of ours yeah. do now. Not yet, not yet. So, so you want to wait a couple of maybe ten years or so? We'll get there. We will get there. I know we will get there, but it's it's a little bit. So, so, so uh, let's let's get into the show then. So, we we did talk about this this evidence, which is which is really old and very very controversial. We talked about uh, Elizabeth Steen McIntyre, who who um, mm. who was pushed out of her um, uh, chosen career. Of geologists because the, the dating that she gave for site was uh, magnitudes ten times as old as, as was acceptable, um, they but did, now they of did, course they they didn't get her on the method just to bring no, up no, no, back no, to no, your no. previous point. Oh, but, but but they didn't even get her on the result. I mean they got her on the result, but subsequent testing and there were two tests or two 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 mm -hmm. separate things that were performed to, to either verify or falsify her findings mm -hmm. found that she was completely correct That's right. her findings were absolutely uh, in line with uh, uh, you know uh, with the, what the testing showed right so she was right she was right but nothing had been done to vindicate her or to even and i haven't heard anyone backdating any of the uh, america's uh, history uh, uh, timelines That's right. To, to to that particular nugget here that we uncovered, right? And it just hasn't happened. And those people still sleep well at night. With yeah, themselves I know. Ruining someone's career. And Correct. Ignoring no. information. That's, it's so frustrating, Mickey. I can't imagine being the person yeah. who brings the information to light. No, look, that's exactly right. So, so look, we, we discussed at length, we discussed uh, scientific dating. Yeah, we actually spent a short cycle on it because it's important to understand it because it's sort of a backbone of, of what we're discussing here. And there are two types of dating. I'm going to very quickly go into it, right? There's relative dating, right? And that's, that's uh, dating in relation to the Earth's crust, if you will, right? So you've got different se sedimentary layers, and depending on, on where you find something within that sedimentary layer, that's how old you think it is. So that's, that's most of the evidence we've brought to you, um, um, or not us, but Cremo, when things are found in coal, you know, in, in certain stratas that have been dated to, to a certain age. That's relative dating, right? And there's, there's problems with it, of course, but you know, there it is. Now, we do know that coal takes a long time to form, or at least we, we think we know that. So anything found in coal, we can we can uh, uh, probably say that that's pretty old, or even amber, right? Things found in amber, um, and then there's there's absolute dating. Now absolute dating is a little bit of a misnomer as well, but absolute dating uh, looks at the decay of radioactive isotopes in uh, in an organic substance. So relative dating can be used to date pretty much anything, mm. organic, inorganic. It, it only matters where it was found in a given sedimentary layer, right? It doesn't matter what it is. You find it in a certain layer, that's how old it is. You think. Uh, absolute dating, age. well, the minimum age, because it had to be, maybe it was made at some point, and it was, uh, who knows, but getting, then there's... in that layer, so that layer is the minimum age of the product, right? Cor correct, yeah. that's exactly right, or at least that's what we think. And then the, the absolute uh, dating, again, a little bit of a misnomer, as I said, because we're looking at radioactive isotopes. The most common is, of course, a C14, carbon and uh, can't remember, I can't remember the half-life of it, um, but that's got a certain... Yeah, okay. Essentially what it means is radioactive isotopes in organic material decay over time. It's called half-life, right? They become less or half as radioactive as they started out. That's the half-life. So let's say it starts at a count of 10, and after 10,000 years, it's a count of 5, and you know, well, you know, this, this isotope actually loses half of its radioactivity in, in okay, let's uh, this, okay. Uh, yeah, amount that it takes today. In, in the case of radiocarbon dating, the half-life of carbon-14 is four, 5,000, 730 years. So in 5,730 years, half of the radioactivity yeah, um, in the isotope is gone. Another 5,700 years, another half is gone, and so on and so forth. That's, that's, called, uh, that's called the half-life of a radioactive isotope. And, and they don't just use uh, C14, they're using others as well. They use this other dating methodology, but it only works with organic 
matter. Okay, uh, because that's that's the one that decays the most. The rock doesn't really decay in, in, in a radioactive sense like that. Now, uh, interestingly enough, though, this is this is where it all falls down for me a little bit. So let's, let's look at Stone Age for a second, right? I mean, we, we think we know how old Stone Age is, but they, they, they can't date the rocks. They can't date the rocks, right? There they are, they're the rocks are there. They're, well, they're old, but we don't know how old they are. We can, maybe they're weathered. So what they do is they look for organic material around the site. You know, hopefully something buried or hidden or whatever it might be. And they, there might be fire, some some northern animal bones, maybe some hide. And they take that, right? And what they found, the organic material. And then they they say, okay, well, this is uh, clearly, I don't know, 10,000 years old. So therefore, Stone Age is 10,000 years old. Now, that, you can see there's a bit of a leap of faith there, right? Oh, yeah. Because... Because we, we don't know if, if the organic material is at all associated with the site. Now, if you found organic material underneath a rock, let's say there's this big rock that was placed on top of a bug, for argument's sake, right? Yeah, yeah. Or a mouse, right? Mm -hmm. It squashed a mouse. Then you move the rock, then uh, you look at the mouse, oh, well, this mouse was squashed when this rock was placed here. You can say with some certainty that the rock must have been placed here at whatever time that was. Like, yeah, maybe the mouse is 10,000 years old, okay, can, the rock was placed here 10,000 years ago. That kind of uh, radio... Uh, carbon dating makes sense to me. It Finding does. nearby stuff, yeah, it's nearby, a little bit... Nearby is okay, but not good. And the patina on a rock is is a terrible way of, of trying to estimate the carving's age because patina, it could, anything, something could, else could have interfered with the growth of the patina on it, right? So that a covering, not just an organic, but, a, you know, a reaction, a chemical reaction with the surroundings. So look, it's, but, it, it puts science in a really terrible position trying to accurately gauge it, but really have really hard time trying to do it with rock. But there's 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 a more there's a more uh, problematic uh, factoid uh, to do with uh, radio isotope dating, and those are the three assumptions that come with it. Because there there's certain assumptions that you have to um, apply in order to date something um, with its radioactive decay. One. The initial conditions of the rock sample are accurately known. So you, you must make some assumptions around the initial conditions. They weren't highly irradiated or they didn't, you know, they didn't come from the heart of the sun or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But we know what the, what the original condition was, right? Two, the amount, the amount of parent or daughter elements in a sample has not been altered by processes other than radioactive decay. Mm -hmm. Now that's a big one for me because they've, Let's say there was there was a burst of gamma radiation, cosmic radiation. Maybe there was a nuclear war, a meteorite impact, whatever. Anything that could have changed the normal yes. radioactive decay. Maybe the isotopes became enriched, or there was maybe maybe there's a slowdown process. Maybe something slowed down the radioactive decay, right? Um, so th that's 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 a, that's a big one it for me. It added new material to the rock. Yeah, thinking Bingo. You know, just just knowing this for a minute, right? That you know when they've dug down you know, two kilometers underground, they've examined the rock, they've found, uh, you know, single cell life forms in the rock. Yes. So that rock and those single cell life forms, if that rock then became exposed to a condition that killed those life forms, there's another life form which will have begun its new journey in its carbon-14 uh, decline. So if you were to examine the rock, you might end up examining that new creature's decline of carbon-14 and not the rock's decline of carbon-14. Does that make sense? And that is, there's yeah. the problem. You're not dating the actual rock, you're dating, dating the creature that was in the rock. Do you know, you know what I mean? But, but you can't date the rock. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, you can't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, no, but that, that's exactly right. 100%. Yeah. Um, and this is this is where you know I mean look it, it helps Dave right it's it's a good it's a good tool to use to give you some idea. Now there's the final assumption and this is uh, uh, that the decay rate uh, and the half life which is just discussed right of the parent isotope has remained constant since the rock was formed. Now um, we don't know that again same same applies Dave as you just said before right we just don't know we can't know this but these are assumptions that must be true for the dating to be accurate. Uh, while we're at it, though, I highly recommend you to uh, for you to read uh, two books, uh, just for a different point of view. One is called Forbidden Archaeology, and the other one is called Devolution. Now, I apologize, but uh, Forbidden Archaeology as well as Devolution are quite dry and very scholarly. 
in, 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 uh, in their content. So you might find them boring, but the information is explosive once you get through it and you understand what, what it's all about. And nobody, and Dave, and we said this before, nobody has ever questioned or attacked the scientific rigor with which Cremo and his uh, um, allies or, well, collaborators have, have uh, performed their research or put their book together. Only the conclusions. Wow. And they question the primary or the prima facie evidence by saying things like, and I have to repeat this again because it's such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to people, you know, back in the 19th century, swearing up and down that they found, a, you know, a, a pot in a lump of coal, uh, then, then the skeptics would say that one problem with this kind of evidence is that it relies heavily on the veracity and memories of the individuals involved. Mm -hmm. Since people commonly lie mm. or are otherwise fallible in this regard, scientifically anecdotal evidence is not worth much mm -hmm. yes it's it's from a it's from a it's from a debunking site um mm -hmm. i urge you to go and read i mean look this is this is this is not i don't, I don't want confirmation bias to cloud our judgment because that doesn't help anyone, mm -hmm. right? if, if there's no mystery let's all go home and just you know eat, eat frozen yogurt and watch watch tv but i believe there are mysteries and and uh, the debunkers try their no actually it's not true they don't try their hardest they really don't try at all no, they don't try it all. They just say, no, nah, that's not how it is. And they I'll say, just... Make it, they say enough that convinces a, a great deal of people to yeah. turn their, turn away and not not uh, investigate any further. Yeah. And I that's think maybe that's do. the only purpose. Yeah, maybe that's the only purpose. Because guess what? Guess what? We, we, we are not the pinnacle of of uh, existence we're not we're not we're not the apex predators you know viruses are and bacteria as far as we're concerned but we we are so far down the the, the food chain from as far as knowledge is concerned it's not funny there's so many things we just don't know we, we we are starting to learn stuff and it's awesome we know a lot more than we did before but we're nowhere near finished learning things mm -hmm. we, we we just started understanding stuff right and and you cannot stifle curiosity right and and call people pseudoscientific guess what the vast majority of scientific breakthroughs in the past you know in the past five thousand years were made by people that we would not term scientists why because they didn't publish in peer-reviewed literature because they don't have a PhD, because they didn't go through the rigors of academia and the scientific method. Because they were, right? they were apprentices. They were, yeah, they, they were, were they were, they were busy. Well. Mm -hmm. Bingo. No, no, but they were also busy just finding out stuff, learning <laughs> stuff, and, they were science and, 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 and yeah, sciencing all day with without having the the I guess the um, advantage, <laughs> if you want to call it that, of, of peer review. Is peer review important? Yeah, it keeps people honest. But it's, it's no good if it stifles a scientific endeavor. It is no good if, if you automatically exclude people from your scientific peer review and, and method and, and journals if they investigate something that you don't like or you think is complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. Who knows what's a complete waste? Dave, if we could figure out how reincarnation works, and I think you have to be a brain dead moron to even um, consider that it's... Yeah, I mean, look, is it for everybody? I don't know, but but there's certainly evidence now. There is evidence. You can call it anecdotal if you want to. There's evidence pointing to reincarnation being a thing. Mm. It's a thing. Mm. And wouldn't you think, all of you out there, that this is one of the most important things we should look at? We're talking about us dying. No one will dispute that. We'll die. But then what happens? The religions will sell you afterlife insurance, right? But if reincarnation is a thing, that means you're coming back. You're coming back, or maybe you're going somewhere else, or, but there's something after you die. That is, I mean, if that is not the most critical piece of information ever, I don't know what is in our current life, if it you is, will. I mean, you, it's a tough pill to swallow, Mickey, if you're an atheist. Yeah, having, I know. Having the connection with the religious texts uh, of the East saying, you know, still heavily... Um, on in on that side of reincarnation but in the west where he's basically just been told you go back to heaven and that's the end of that but, but the thing is this, but that was changed right and so the message is 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 now a mixed message and there's so many different you know viewpoints on it i think they've said ignore what's behind the curtain right there's no one here don't look behind the curtain 
And my analogy, Mackie, of this whole thing is like it's a video game and we're in it this time with this life with our 20 cents on the machine. Oh, yes, I'm old, right? It was, wasn't a dollar and two dollars a game. It was 20 cents when I was playing. Um, and in America, when I was there, it was a quarter. You paid a quarter for a, for a game. And then you come back and you play the game again. You came, come back again and you play the game, but without the memories from last time past a certain age you lose them right that's, that's got to be a hard pill to swallow Mickey, for people it, look it is but but be bear in mind one thing though you don't have to be a believer in anything you can be an atheist an agnostic a christian mm -hmm. a jew a buddhist a hindu it, it's completely irrelevant and and you could still experience reincarnation. That's what the that's what the studies found. It's, your mm -hmm. religious background is completely irrelevant. That's right. Irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Completely doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And and in fact, you don't. And you see, we always go back to this whole uh, theistic, or, 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 or we, we always look at the gods and God. Reincarnation may very well work completely outside of any god structures. It might just be another biological thing. I mean, you live, you die, you come back. It's just another form of energy we can't detect. Hello? We should have learned something by now. There are energies out in the world, right? Even after we die, even ourselves, energy, right? That we can't detect, can't manipulate, and uh, certainly none of us, maybe the elite can, I don't know. But the point is that it should not be that hard to believe. We've just been indoctrinated here, Dave. And you said a very important thing, that the atheists will have a hard time. Why? See, atheists believe we die and then we have worm food. But maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe there's something else. But you don't have to be. You don't have to believe in God in order to believe in reincarnation. One, the, the two aren't related. They are not related. No, no one ever said. In fact, nobody said that they were judged and then they were sent to become a worm or something. Right? Mm -hmm. no, nobody has said any of that. I mean, usually it went from from death to rebirth. Maybe, maybe it's with with some interim period of, of floating. Right? That was this. That was That's discovered. Right. That was one of the quotes. Yeah. So it, right? it, it, our soul has a meat suit at the moment, and that's us. Yeah, that's it. So isn't that the most important thing that we should be studying it now? We shouldn't be just devote. I mean, I'm sure governments are, but we should be devoting a whole bunch of time. Now, having said that, of course, and this is where the um, hypothesis will take us. And now, again, I'm taking you along uh, on the journey here. We're taking you by the hand, right? Of course, people are studying. So of course, people know a lot more than, than the common Jones mm -hmm. Street. And we want to bring you some of that information as, as we move along, because there's a lot to know. To know. There's a, and we're not the first. Not by a long stretch. We're not That's the right. first to... Not, not Dave and I, not our generation, not the generation before us. We're not the first to, to, to ask these questions and, and have some answers. I believe that we're rediscovering a whole bunch of knowledge that was uh, partially lost. It was kept alive by some of the secret societies, sometimes only from, from master to disciple, you know, mouth to mouth, mouth to ear, mouth to ear, you know, that was it. And then other is, is secret hidden knowledge that might have been rediscovered in, you know, in certain places in Jerusalem, you know, by certain Knights Templars, you know, which might have become Masons at some point. I'm not saying this, I'm not saying something else. But my point here is that the knowledge, some of it has, has survived. And, and um, for, for the common people like us, uh, certainly it survived much better for the elite because the elites, they know what they're doing, I reckon, and they've got a whole bunch more knowledge than, than you could possibly imagine. Mm. And that's why they're steering us away from certain things. They're steering us away. That's why magic, talk about magic is ridiculed. Mm -hmm. Talk about, uh, you know, um, reincarnation, talk about uh, all kinds of other things like, like you know, fairies, and, uh, m mystical, magical uh, fairy tales and, and, and myths. It's all, we all steered away from that. No, nah, don't talk about it. That's just stupid. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't look at it. Uh, you know, if you're a serious person, you shouldn't even be thinking about looking at this. So the, the harder someone is trying to steer you away from something, the harder you should be looking at it. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's that's really what I'm trying mm. to say to you here. Um, quick data point, Dave. Um, we, we've spent a lot of time not talking about, you know, scientific dating and all that. And we, we, we spent a lot of time last week looking at evidence which might make humanity a lot older. And in fact, one thing we discovered, Dave, was that the age of humanity, Homo sapiens sapiens, is being pushed further and further back in time. Right? Every time we look at it. Every time we look at it, we find another, uh, no, no longer just ancestors. Like Neanderthal, for the longest, when I grew up, Neanderthal was an ancestor. No, nope, contemporary now, right? That's then right. a sovereign. Ancestor, no, nope, contemporary. Exactly. And, the, and, and the more time we'll spend digging, <laughs> Dave, the more, the, more, the more stuff we'll find out there, the more we will look at our genomes, the more um, uh, contemporary 
uh, uh, homo sapien uh, races, I want to call them, if for want of a better word, we will find. Because we're going to breed. You can't... Inter- so, so while horses and donkeys can interbreed, they produce sterile offspring, a mule. Mm. Right? But it was, it was clear that we, you know, having interbred with uh, Neanderthal, Denisovan, uh, Florensis, produced non-sterile offspring, which means we are more closely related than mules, uh, sorry, uh, donkeys and horses, for example, right? So, so we, we can interbreed successfully, That's, producing... And that means we're the same species. Bingo. Fertile. Yeah, just, yeah. Like, we think we're diverse now. We said this last week. Yep. We're not diverse at all. I mean, think about it. And we said this. Blue-skinned, you know, could be giants, could be tiny people, you know, could be tiny, tiny people. There are so many stories about tiny, like, thumb-sized people. And you, you can ridicule it. Why? Why would you ridicule it? How do you know that's not a thing? Right. Look at this. See, this is the funny thing, Dave. We, we have no problem at all with megafauna. You look at the... You know, the giant sloth, giant kangaroo, um, crocodile, uh, uh, you know the giant crocodiles? Uh, 18 of the meters right? long. 18 meters long. 18 meters long, Megalodon. right? Megalodon, yes, exactly. The shark, the, 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 anyway, the point here is we have no problem at all seeing all these animals that still exist in the same format as they do today, mm-hmm. right? They existed then, today, it's, 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 it's a giant sloth, it's a sloth. It's a crocodile, it's a crocodile. But they have shrunk significantly today. They're much smaller, right? But we have the hardest time accepting that uh, that uh, humans could be smaller. Yeah, yeah. Dave, pig, pygmy elephants, pygmy oh, no. elephants, oh, right? No. So, so why can't we have these tiny? And I'm not talking about Florenzi's uh, four foot people. I'm talking about people that are maybe under one foot, yeah. right? Why? Why not? Why is that such an impossibility? Why do we have this 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 filter? We're gonna ah, no, Maggie, my head is exploding. Please don't talk anymore. <laughs> right? It makes me. Well, it makes me upset a little bit, right? Because people don't it's want so to much. Listen. They don't. No. It, 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 this is this is the same struggle that we, Maggie and I, Maggie and I come across all the time. And 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 I love Maggie that you're so animated about this because it is, it's truly frustrating. That people yeah. are, they've closed the book on all of science ever. Don't need to know anymore. That's it. Oh, something new comes up. They find a jawbone or a leg bone or something mm-hmm. in some dig, and they go, "Ah, oh, well, you know, we've got to peer review it," and you know, yeah. and then they go, "Ah, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll succeed and and suggest maybe, you know, I'll give in to it and I'll, oh yeah, all right, okay." But yeah. they, but they, and there's and it's such a slow evolution. It's like the government of science. I have to say that. Yeah. It's, it is such a slow um, evol- um, evolution of progression of ideas that, uh, that wouldn't, even if today, Mickey, if you and I today created anti-gravity, we'd have the haters on us, we would have the skeptics, the debunkers, oh, yeah. and then we'd oh, have yeah. people destroying our personal character, oh, yeah. who we are, the standing in society about yeah. making something that's apparently impossible but we did it right that's if we did it but we haven't done it yeah. but, but that that's where it goes until yeah. until you can get it out there and make it so people can see it and you they can make it themselves and go well i didn't believe it until i made it myself <laughs> yeah yeah that's look what? This yeah i know it's 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 crazy it is, it is, it is, it's insanity is it, it is, it is. we locked up copernicus mickey uh, well, we wanted to 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 burn Galileo. So there you go. I know. I mean, it's 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 always the few, never the the, the great mass. It's always the few that pushes humanity along, right? Always the few, and they're always either derided or ridiculed or actively persecuted mm-hmm. by whichever power uh, there might be. And it doesn't have to be religious. Thinking alone has gone off. Yeah, free thinking. No good. No good to anyone, right? I mean, the, the last thing you want is is a, is a, is, a, is a mature adult free thinking population. Doesn't help anyone. No, no elite would ever want that <laughs> in their life. And look, um, I do want to go into the text. I think we've got enough time to to make a bit of a dent here. But 15. so just let's. So we'll, 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 we'll get some. Um, so so hum, humanity might just might be a lot older than we had previously thought, right? Well, well, not entirely true, really, because Eastern cultures, specifically the Indian civilization. Uh, have no issues with acknowledging the great antiquity of humanity, right? So, so uh, Eric von Däniken, for example, you know, he goes to, to India, goes, yeah, we know all of that. 
thanks thanks for telling us again. <laughs> right? and, and they talk about Vimanas and flying machines and, and wars and, and, and it wars that destroy entire peoples and wonderful stuff like that. And it's it's not a thing. You know, even ancient Chinese uh, uh, texts, same thing. A any, anything in the East, pretty much, you will find, oh, yeah, we, we know about this. Yeah, we, we've heard about it. Um, it is the West, us, and I'm saying the West, uh, European, Eurocentric, right? And that has largely subscribed to a linear version of history with an agreed upon dawn some six million years ago, which was uh, uh, the accepted advent of our hominid ancestors. Six million years, give or take, right? Again, that's, that's being pushed further into the past as well. Now, there seems to be, and we have discussed in the past, ample evidence for high civilizations similar in capability to our own, and some maybe more advanced, albeit displaying different characteristics such as different technologies or different energy sources or whatever. I mean, just because we develop a certain way doesn't mean we'll develop the same way again, right? Because there might be some other uh, crucial points or, or, or data. Uh, um, Skips, jumps, and yeah. wars, Mackie. Very good. Tell, tell us about the pyramids, Dave. Oh, my goodness me. What is there not to know about this? We know that they're perfectly aligned to the cardinal points north south east and west um, there's virtually no subsidence where they've been created despite the shale that they're sitting on my goodness the there's no inscriptions within the pyramids the great pyramids themselves these are the ones that are likely the ones that are there are likely to be fake Mickey you mentioned this the other the other day because the only cartouche found in a pyramid spelling Shufu's name is fake, recognizable through a spelling mistake. The name was not written with the correct signs, the sieve, quail, viper, and quail, which are representing the consonants ku, wu, f, u, or wu at the end. Um, it had a solar disk a r at the beginning instead of the sieve, the k sound. Instead of the sieve, a circle with several horizontal lines, a circle with a single dot in the middle was written there. The name in the pyramid thus is spoken re ufu. This mistake, unthinkable for ancient Egyptian writers, is explainable on the background of 1837 in that year an academic book about hieroglyphs had been published materia hieroglyphica in which the name khufu was written with a mistake the lines of the sieve were so close together that they appeared in the print like a massive disc another way of writing uh, <laughs> and it is known that it was a use vice 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 had this book with him on his excavation so so vice is the guy who found the uh, uh, the, the cartouche keep going yes. the whole 1837 expedition stood under a bad sign the money had run out and nothing what had been hoped for had been achieved so a member of the expedition planned to spice up the results and he went into the new discovered chambers and the, the moment the blast fumes had finished he painted equipped with the fatal misprint from the book some text to the walls and there he painted the name Shufu as he found it in the book with a solid disc and not with a sieve the faker, presumably J.R. Hill, also made another mistake. Instead of hieroglyphics, he used a letter system only used for... Uh, papyri. Papyri, that's the papyrus writing. Yep, that's it. Um, a handwriting called heretics. See, Dave, we put this here, uh, esteemed listenership, to, to highlight how quickly we're happy to gloss over all of what we just said and attribute the pyramids to Khufu, the Cheops pyramids, right? That's Khufu right, pyramids. Right, yeah. And and if you look, at, if you just do a little bit of digging, right, which we did, 
and you you find out oh okay right and this is by the way not not ours this is we we, we borrowed uh, uh, of course some of this from from our fellow researchers mm -hmm. but we verified it all all of a sudden you realize if if it fits within the accepted timelines of of um, you know um, the academic uh, environment and world mm -hmm. it's accepted no matter how shaky mm -hmm. no matter how fraudulent no it's, it fits it fits yeah. but it doesn't it doesn't and and make no mistake these are the only inscriptions ever found inside the pyramids nothing there wasn't even there wasn't even soot no. on the inside That's right. of the pyramids yeah no soot nothing pristine so the ones they do find all oh, they misspelled the same misspelling that was found in a contemporary book due to a not the the, the book didn't make the mistake the book it just the it was the types at the print it, yeah it, yeah the typesetters um ability Correct. to do such fine detail or the Correct. size of the image was too small there you go and it was a comp it was a perfectly understandable mistake i mean you know if, if you had used it in your dissertation you know you would still have gotten an a because you know the the, the lecturer would have looked at the book or oh, look fair enough the book your, your your primary source here was wrong fair enough if you inscribe the pyramids you don't get so much lenience <laughs> okay <laughs> not so much That's not so much funny. leniency there I'm, I'm sorry you just don't um but but look th th there's more of course um there is there is uh, the, 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 mis the megalithic structures we, we discussed at length and all over the world that you find these megalithic megalithic just means large stone they're large yeah. stone structures right uh, similar tooling marks similar appearance of structures similar way of putting them together baalbek my favorite right mm. it's a unesco list as the world heritage site they've they have got a three 1000 ton monoliths in the platform not at bottom level but about three stories up yep. and there were several other 1000 and higher uh, ton stones uh, still in the quarry i think there are four three or four now yep. still in the quarry dave yeah that's right there's also uh the inca walls so far perfect fit today no mortar perfect fit they've survived earthquakes numerous earthquakes since their creation whenever that was whenever it was but to, but we, we still see that same style of stonework in four places around the planet where where there the shapes of the stones weren't square cut just for the first listener that they had you know seven eight ten sides but that stone is a, a unique stone every stone is unique in the wall crazy mm -hmm. design specifications there i know i know i mean it, but it, it goes even further i mean they found very similar structures underwater day right in bimini there's a street that uh, we call the street uh, of, of, of blocks stone blocks it goes mm -hmm. yeah into the water it goes though right yeah. indian ocean same thing they found uh, um they found um disputed mind you um ruins just off the coast of japan as well um they talk about uh, in that bit it's a road between India and Sri Lanka. Yeah, the famous bridge. Now, see, this is the thing. We spent a show on this, actually. People go, oh, no, no one built this. No, no. So you see, the person that that, that stipulated that there was a bridge built between Sri Lanka and, and southern India uh, didn't say that someone built this entire thing. So the, the there's a natural, um, not a trench, there's a natural uh, uh, a wall, underwater uh, um, range, if you will, right, that already exists. All right so he didn't he, it was never said that this entire thing was built but what the person did say the indian scholar is that this natural a uh, feature was used to build a bridge upon like a weird, to connect it was a yeah natural coral correct reef but it was like a weir and they built a road platform on yeah. top of it correct that's that's all that was said not the entire structure the structure is natural nobody disputes this but this scholar said and with evidence backing him up that he had mm. that this was what happened they actually built this road connecting sri lanka or ceylon or you know whatever your preservation might be uh, to to the uh, southern tip of continent or subcontinental india 100 percent correct dave yeah absolutely and, and there's this and story supporting the use of the road yes because yes the that, i mean again stolen had to go back and get them the horses and the whole uh, business that's exactly right. And, and this is where we go into the area of myth, 
again, right? You got Viminas, voice control doors, open sesame, flying chariots, Bible references, similar flap myths across the globe. We spend a lot of time on flap myths. It's not the similarities, but the differences that make the flap myths believable. Mm -hmm. We've, Dave, look, you, you've, you've done a lot of research into the flap myths and what might have happened. Why don't you just quickly outline the, 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 the uh, turn of a Wednesday, possibly? Well, <laughs> simply put, the same story where the rivers rose, not it just rained, the rivers rose, the oceans rose, and people in different places of the world either hid, in, hid their children inside logs and sealed them with wax. They climbed to tops mm -hmm. of mountains and shared that with other animals until the water subsided. But in every case, for the most part, not one person that lived pre-flood then lived post-flood. It was their offspring and yes. children. Yes. And in some exactly. cases, they were pre-warned by what they called, you know, what we would say extraterrestrials, possibly. Um, in some cases, they were told that they were saved by the the watchers, came and saved them. In in sometimes there was a, a metal craft that descended from the sky. Mm -hmm. Like these aren't these aren't words of a, an ancient people who didn't know any of this stuff, right? These aren't. They didn't talk to each other. This isn't Noah in every case, right? This is just mm -hmm. a local story. That's right. We'll, we'll just quickly do the others now, and, and then the, the end of the story, but we'll, uh, we'll definitely... Two minutes. Look, the ling linguistic similarities. Uh, we, we've got Berlitz uh, to thank for that. Charles Berlitz, the uh, grandson of the founders of the Berlitz schools. Swift mentions Phobos and Diamos and the specific properties in Gulliver's Travels in 1726. When they were only discovered in 1877, some lost knowledge coming through. The old maps show geographical features that should have been unknown at the time. Peary race is one of them. Earth curvature, for example. Right? The moon, potentially the largest artifact. Ancient cultures speak of a time before the moon. Hmm? The tribes before the moon. The asteroid belt. According to Bode's law, there should be a planet at the position of the asteroid belt. All the other planets, except for Neptune, follow Bode's law. we got a little table here, right? All of them. Almost... It's like the, the, the accuracy is astounding. And, and where the asteroids are, there should be a planet. There isn't anymore. Maybe, right? Maybe. Um, look, this is this is what we wanted to mention uh, to, you, to you this week very, very quickly. There's lost knowledge from civilizations before us. There's ample evidence of civilizations before us with very high uh, technological sophistication, albeit you know potentially different from what we have today. There's a good case to make humanity a lot older than we thought it is. And it might not just be the humanity in its present incarnation as we understand it, but our forebears, right? Mm. The races that came before us upon which we might have been based, like a blueprint, for, for example. Because I believe there was a lot of interference in our past. And next week, next week, we're going to talk about the Atrahasis epic. Abridged, awesome. abridged, mind you. Which, dis which we discussed in the Gigi Show cycle in detail. Yes. Why? Because it is one of the oldest and most detailed creation myths we have at our disposals. It's Kuna Fame Trans... This is a translation uh, that was... Uh, I've taken off the net. Anyone can do the same thing. It is uh, from Genius.com. And it's uh, the translation by Stephanie Deli. Stephanie Deli. It's, 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 uh, it's a scientifically accepted uh, translation. And we're going to read it together dave awesome. and then we're going to have our commentary here because this is probably one of the most important primary texts even though it's translated it's still primary text mm -hmm. that we will ever come across ever yeah. the